way of uh, looking for model improvements is to compare CMIP5 models versus CMIP6 models. Coupled model intercomparison projects are used under the IPCC to produce the assessment reports. Uh, we had four uh, assessment report four in 2007, five in 2014, and two six assessment report six is being released now. I tried to show the lake in the last podcast, but I didn't do a good job. Uh, maybe you cannot see it here very well at all. Can you see it? Not really. The light is not good. Okay, uh, let's not worry about it. <laughs> Breeze is coming. I love it, but unfortunately you cannot see it. I used to uh, record on the balcony before. Uh, maybe I should start doing that again. Okay, so uh, one way to think about model uh, intercomparisons uh, is to compare uh, the CMIP5 generation models with CMIP6 generation models. What are the various things uh, compared? Let's start with this so-called climate sensitivity. What is climate sensitivity? It is basically the idea that if we increase the uh, CO2 concentration in the atmosphere at some rate like 1% per year, which takes about 70 uh, years to uh, double, then you start at uh, year zero uh, let's say the temperature anomaly at that point is considered uh, zero with respect to some base period and you keep increasing the CO2 in the atmosphere that forces the models and you take it to double uh, in whatever the doubling period and then you keep it constant uh, at that uh, level or you quadruple it and then keep it at that level and see what equilibrium temperature change in the global mean is produced and that's called climate sensitivity. So here global mean temperature change for 1% per year uh, CO2 increase with subsequent stabilization at do CO2, double the CO2 or quadruple the CO2 uh, is accomplished. Red curves are from a coupled atmosphere ocean general circulation model from the geophysical fluid dynamics lab in Princeton, a NOVA lab, while the green curves are from simple illustrative model with no exchange of energy with the deep ocean. Transient climate response, TCR, is uh, the temperature change at the time of uh, CO2 doubling and uh, the equilibrium climate sensitivity T2x is the temperature change after the uh, system has reached equilibrium so that's T2x uh, and uh, here is, is uh, T4x of course uh, which is accomplished after equilibrating at four times uh, quadrupling the CO2. So additional warming, uh, uh, so if you have a simple model and the full model, it shows how when you have the full model moving CO2 through the system, uh, it reaches the transient response at doubling time and even though you equilibrated the CO2, the warming continues because um, remember the sawtooth pattern of the ice uh, period uh, temperature and CO2 we looked at. We said in the current period we are increasing CO2 uh, but temperature is not increased as fast yet because uh, it is still being taken up by the vegetation, by the uh, ocean and so on. So over a long time, uh, here 500 years, that equilibration uh, keeps on warming the system so you can see that the uh, committed warming, what is called committed warning. So even though uh, we are stopping emissions here, the uh, accumulated carbon is able to continue the warming. So additional warming commitment uh, forcing stabilized that 4 CO2 versus uh, 2 CO2 is this. So you are eventually going to reach this temperature. So the climate sensitivity for doubling here is sh shown as 3.5 degrees C uh, and the idea is to check how the models compare. So model comparison is a very, very detailed task. So in the CMIP6 experiments, there are many things, uh, cloud forcing uh, model intercomparison, uh, regional phenomenon, ocean, land, ice, 
uh, impacts. So Cordex is a regional dynamic uh, downscaling experiment. Scenarios where multiple scenarios that we mentioned in RCP and SSP. Uh, there is decadal prediction experiments, geoengineering experiments where you put aerosols in the uh, stratosphere and other experiments to check. So you're looking at systematic biases, variability, predictability and future scenarios, land use. Uh, so MIP here is model in comparison project. So you can see geoengineering MIP, uh, land use MIP, uh, climate change and carbon cycle MIP, uh, aerosol and chemistry MIP and so on and so forth. So the, the the teams work incredibly hard to generate the protocols, stick to them very strictly, make quantitative uh, assessments, uh, standardization, coordination, infrastructure, documentation and so everything is kept very very systematically documented so that the legal and binding agreements between countries rely on things that are not just done uh, academically but actually very very systematically and in a very uh, a waterproof way. Um, okay so these are the kind of papers you get if you Google. You see improved atmospheric circulation over Europe by the new generation of CMIP-6 Earth system models. Improved atmospheric, so that's the same thing. Uh, improvement in uh, circumpolar southern hemisphere extratropical atmospheric circulation in CMIP-6 uh, models compared to CMIP-5. Evaluation of the performance of CMIP-5 and CMIP-6 models uh, and so on. So Carbon Brief is a nice website that provides these kind of uh, uh, information so I, I just took a few figures from them. Uh, we just defined climate sensitivity so you start off by looking at climate sensitivity in CMIP-6 models. So here is equilibrium climate sensitivity in degree centigrade for doubling of CO2. You can see that the range is quite high. The highest uh, sensitivity from the Canadian Earth System model is uh, at 5.6 degrees whereas uh, the one down here is uh, less than 2 degrees centigrade. So uh, equilibrium climate sensitivity, va sensitivity values from 40 CMIP-6 models available as of May 2020 were necessary experiments to calculate ECS. So obviously models are uh, doing uh, similar things in terms of trying to represent the Earth system. They have different details, different parameterizations, different resolutions uh, and so on and yet they produce um, different climate sensitivities which should be kept in mind. Now looking at global surface temperatures for 1880 to 2019 uh, in CMIP-6 CMIP and observations. So in the historic period we have uh, the observations um, observed CMIP-6 and CMIP-5. So the range of models cover the observed range fairly well. Uh, CMIP-5 and CMIP-6 in the global mean are tracking each other fairly closely and you can see that there are lots of ups and downs in the observed uh, uh, temperature anomalies with respect to 1880 to 1900 baseline. The baseline can be shifted, it doesn't matter. It just moves these curves around but doesn't change the story. Why is that? Because given the anthropogenic forcing of greenhouse gases and other natural forcings like volcanic volcanic eruptions, solar activity, the low frequency trend in global mean warming can be produced and some kind of regime shifts are captured uh, like volcanic eruption here, volcanic eruption here are captured but the year-to-year -year variability is not always captured because this is not a prediction this is a simulation so you're starting with the uh, pre-industrial level of CO2 you're making a simulation for a long time to equilibrate the model to that CO2 and then you continue to increase CO2 and this is a transient response so models have El Niños for example but the model El Niño doesn't necessarily happen at the same time as the uh, El Nino in the real world because it's not a prediction. So if you understand it, keep it in mind. If not, just remember that point and uh, 
the credibility of the models comes from uh, it, their ability to produce observed anthropogenically forced warming or any uh, change in low f at low frequencies resulting from a natural variability. So here are the CIMIP-5 and CIMIP-6 historical trends. 1880 to 2019 observed was down here at 0 0.07. CIMIP-5 and CIMIP-6 did a large range with means medians of uh, 0.08 and 0.07. For 1970 to 2019 where the uh, warming accelerated Observed warming was almost double at 0.19 degrees C uh, for that period, uh, for this period. Uh, so you can see that uh, the observed, uh, the, the modeling model range in CIMI 5 uh, was smaller and was at 0.21, and the uh, range in CIMI 6 models is larger, and the warming. Uh, uh, Median is at 0.22. You have to make sure whether it's median or uh, it has to be median. Okay, so that just tells you. And comparing CIMIP5 and CIMIP6 scenarios, we talked about representative concentration pathway 2.6, which is a very benign one in terms of trying to keep the global warming to below 2 degrees C by 2100 with 67% probability. I always have to say that. And the shared socioeconomic pathway 1, uh, 2.6, you know, they got a little complicated in the CMIP 6 compared to CMIP 5. So there is the range uh, for higher emission scenarios of 4.5. They are range is higher, mean is higher. Uh, SSP 4, 6.0 for CMIP 6 is not available, but there is uh, uh, RCP 6. Um, RCP 8.5, the business as usual scenario, uh, the uh, CMIP 6 models project much, much larger range of warming and also a higher median of uh, warming. So these things have to be uh, kept in mind. So this gives you a sense that not only are models being uh, improved in terms of their uh, process representations, resolutions, and uh, other uh, uh, components like uh, land ice, dynamic vegetation, and uh, uh, active carbon cycle, and uh, aerosols, and so on. But we constantly keep comparing the new versions, new generation of models with the previous generation of models to see how the uh, biases are reduced, and how the historical representations are improved, and how future projections are different. Okay, so that gives us confidence that we are headed in the right direction. That's a lot of work, but uh, essential. There is a lot of debate about whether this kind of uh, large computation needs to go on or not, but we will not get into that uh, here. Okay?